Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns. Breaking news, it looks like we are about to have a significant solar flare or multiple from Sunspot Group 4114. These are explosions on the sun, many times the size of our planet. And what's significant about this is 4114 has been growing rapidly and it's about to be in the Earth Direct Strike Zone, which is this central meridian right there. So it's approaching that very quickly. There's a bit of a zone actually around that called the Earth Strike Zone. And if it does decide to have a big explosion, and there's a lot of factors indicating that it's going to, then that solar storm that it launches, this coronal mass ejection, or effectively a giant blob of plasma, the fourth state of matter, the most vibrational and highly energized, state of matter will be launched directly towards the Earth. And when that passes by the Earth, that is a solar storm impact. And that could trigger a significant geomagnetic storm. And so I'm watching this very closely. But if you just watch this video here, our 131 angstrom imagery of the sun for about the past 36 hours, you notice this electrical activity just increasing dramatically during that time frame. And you also will notice this sunspot group subtly getting larger. You will also notice that the strongest solar flare during this time frame actually was from this sunspot group right here, 4105, approaching the western limb of the sun solar coordinate system. And so the two sunspot groups are flaring together sympathetically, showing that in general, there's just more activity on the earth facing side of the sun right now. And we've also had some plasma filaments blast off. So let's do a quick solar activity report to see exactly what is happening with our sun and what is most likely to occur over the next few hours and days. Looking at our 131 angstrom imagery a little bit more, this time zoomed in though, you'll see all the sunspots and activity is close to the equator of the sun. And the reason why is because right now we are in solar cycle 25 maximum and you get these sunspot groups to slowly move towards the equator where eventually there is a termination event. You enter into solar minimum and the whole cycle starts over again. And so there's not much activity up in the poles, though there have been some plasma filaments launched from the Northern Hemisphere around that Earth's central meridian. But just notice how active these sunspot groups are right now at this moment in time. They are spitting fire. And it looks like we're about to have a big explosion or perhaps even multiple from sunspot group 4114 at any moment now. This solar flare activity is not the only thing that's occurring right now as it relates to the sun and overall space weather. We also have a very large coronal hole on the sun. I've been discussing this on the channel. So if you've been watching, you know what these are. They are open regions in the solar corona where the plasma density is low, the temperature is low, and the magnetic field streams out really nicely into interplanetary space. This is now about to connect to the Earth in a pretty strong way, and that's expected to give us some G1, potentially even G2 geomagnetic storming. The scale rating goes to five, and this is a coronal hole and emits a high-speed stream. And so if we get a large explosion from sunspot group 4114, then that could reach the Earth faster than normal because the solar wind density is likely to be lower and also already moving along at a higher velocity. And so that could potentially amplify the effects of a solar storm launch from 4114. If we look at the Northern Hemisphere here, we see a few interesting things. We'll notice a plasma filament kind of blast off here very soon. And there it is. And then we'll notice another disturbance here launch off next. There it is. And we see a third one occur right there at the very end of this video. Give this a watch. You actually see a mini coronal hole develop really quickly during that time frame, showing that there's already some magnetic field disturbances in the northern hemisphere near this sunspot group. So that could make it more likely to destabilize and have a big explosion. So the electric and magnetic fields here in this region are already very active and dynamic. And you'll also notice that this coronal hole has two areas where it cuts up to the northern hemisphere passing through the equator. So it's starting to form also a bit of this upward movement there. You see it strengthening here as the video continues on. And watch how this coronal hole develops right above the sunspot group, actually intersecting sunspot group 4114 and 4115. And so there's a lot of activity right now around that group. One reason why it's probably been so active. And this is why I think it's about to flare at any moment now. And some more data suggesting that we're likely to have some big, significant solar flares over the next few hours to days is our X-ray flux. 
Sunspots release a lot of light when they have these sort of flares, these explosions. And so the solar light spectrum is centered around infrared to visible to ultraviolet light, but it also goes higher vibrational than that to extreme ultraviolet and x-ray light. And solar flares specifically release a lot of x-ray light. And so we're looking at past seven days as measured by geostationary satellites. And we noticed that our x-ray flux baseline was here below 10 to the negative six watts per meter squared. And since then it's been slowly rising up. And so in general, when X-ray flux baseline is higher, you have a potential for a stronger solar flare. We've been ramping up now for seven days and we've had these three solar flares pop off in just the last 24 hours, a 6.8 M-class flare, and then a 2.2 and a 1.9. And so conditions are basically perfect for us to have a significant solar storm launch towards Earth because Sunspot Group 4114 has been growing rapidly. The X-ray flux baseline is high and we have this coronal hole interacting in and around that Sunspot Group. And here we can look more specifically at Sunspot Group 4114 right here. We also have 4115 right there, a big core right next to it. So this entire zone there is very dynamic at this moment in time. We see our Sunspot numbers have been going up now for the past 30 days. We're right under 150. This was very, very low. The numbers we had in May were anomalously low, a huge drop for solar cycle 25 maximum, but we're now back up to 150 for our daily count, mostly because of Sunspot Group 4114. Here we have a two day look at the earth facing side of the sun in terms of sunspots. This is known as an intensity gram. We see some sunspot groups rotate out. This is 4105 that has also been flaring. That's what gave us that 6.8 M class flare that was not from this group. But as we've just seen the past 24 hours, 4114 has been the most active with a lot of dynamic activity and soon to approach that earth center direct zone. But look at how big it has grown during that time frame. about the same length, but really gone fat and heavy. These cores have gotten a lot denser and darker, meaning that the magnetic field strength has strengthened. And so this is looking like a perfect recipe for a significant solar flare and therefore a solar storm launch directly towards us. We just examined the sunspots on the Earth facing side of the sun, but we can also examine what's happening on the far side thanks to the Solar Orbiter Probe, which happens to be exactly 180 degrees opposite the Earth right now at this moment in time. And we see that there's effectively no sunspots on the far side of the sun, meaning that all this solar activity is mostly condensed to sunspot group 4114 right in that Earth strike zone. And there's really not much happening over here, at least as it relates to sunspots. So we do see some very tiny ones, but in general, nothing big. And so as the days continue, we are gonna have this part of the sun rotate into Earth facing position. And we're not gonna get any sunspots from the far side unless some new flux pushes out and creates new sunspots, which is a process that happens all the time. But there's no pre-existing large sunspots on the far side at this moment in time that we have to soon think about rotating to Earth facing and direct. Here we have our C3 chronograph view showing us the near sun environment, and specifically any sort of solar storms that launch off from the sun. Our sun is this white circle there, but they put a disc over the sun to block the light so we can see the dimmer outflows from the sun, the solar corona, the solar wind, and these solar storms. We see the stars behind the sun right there. You also notice this very bright light showing up on the C3 chronograph. That in fact is Jupiter about to go Kazemi in a superior conjunction. So Jupiter's on the far side of the sun, and this is one of the factors that is contributing to this critical planetary geometry that is clicking into place around June 21st or so, going all the way to the end of the month. I've been talking about that. I first gave the forecast for enhanced solar activity and or geomagnetic activity around that time frame on May 29th. And well, that's exactly what we're seeing now, some big active sunspot groups on the sun starting to flare as Jupiter is getting close to that superior conjunction. Here we see two solar storms launch off, one to the north there and one to the west solar coordinate system. These are not interacting with the Earth, but activity has now been going up. And let us not forget that Sunspot Group 4114 was launching a ton of coronal mass ejections out into space when it was on the eastern limb of the sun. And that was when that Sunspot Group was much smaller. Now it's grown significantly. So it's potential for a big solar storm launch is quite a bit higher, and I think that's quite likely over the next 24 to 72 hours.
Looking at our real-time space weather conditions, we see that A, we're not in a geomagnetic storm at this moment in time, though we did just get out of a long duration G2 geomagnetic storm. Also, we are not in a solar proton radiation storm because we haven't had a significant enough solar explosion to launch and accelerate these relativistic ions towards Earth. And we're not in a radio blackout right now as a result of a solar flare and the light photons from that hitting the Earth, charging up the ionosphere. So right now as I'm filming this, everything is normal, but we likely have some activity coming in as I've described. And this solar storm impact right here that came in just a few days ago now, this has kind of preconditioned the Earth a little bit. We're starting to move away from that. So that preconditioning aspect is going to go down. But effectively, this means that there's been a bit more energetic volatility in recent time, and that's likely to make energetic volatility more likely if we get something to hit us fairly soon. And we do have that coronal hole high-speed stream impact soon to come in. We see our solar wind velocity has gone up, this purple line. Now we're in the 500 zone. This is kilometers per second, but density is still quite high at about 10 to 11 uh, particles per cubic centimeter. So it's probably not that high-speed stream yet just kind of like the advance of it. And we see that these solar wind conditions have quieted down. We also look down here at our temperature. Temperature has gone up a little bit for the plasma, but in general, things are normal. Uh, after this solar storm impact, or just this in general, this enhancement in the solar wind, but it's very likely that we go back to G1 levels within the next 24 hours or so. So if you're bioelectrically sensitive, keep that in mind. Make sure you do your earthing and your grounding. Make sure you eat good, clean food, drink good, clean water, do some breath work exercises. You know, that yogic belly breath is really good for helping you drop into parasympathetic activity and for reducing inflammation and pain because these sort of enhancements in space weather and solar activity in general affect us biologically. Some people are more sensitive than others. Everything is connected together energetically. We are bioelectric beings and the sun and the cosmos and the earth all together control our electromagnetic environment. So keep that in mind, especially if we have a big solar storm or perhaps multiple soon to launch our way, interacting with the earth energetically in a big way. That's the update for you today. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, then smash that like button, help this channel grow. It really does do a lot. We've been growing tremendously over the past few months. We're on the road to 500,000 subscribers, so please also subscribe if you have not done so already and you find value in these broadcasts. I bring together what's happening on the Earth geologically. We also examine the geophysical energies like the Schumann resonances, combine that with solar activity, space weather, planetary resonances, and cosmic forces, and brew that all together holistically. I present videos on that almost daily, so again, Thank you all so much for your support. If you like to pick up some all organic herbal teas and or earthing shoe products, those are available on the website at wildfreeorganic.com. All these products that I make are designed to help you with these increased energies that we are currently experiencing at this moment in time from Solar Cycle 25 Maximum and also from the pretty historic planetary residences that are currently active. That's why I have this storefront in the first place is because when I was first getting into this, I was looking for solutions on how to keep myself grounded, healthy, and well, and I decided to extend that out to everyone as a public service. So you can pick that up at wildfreeorganic.com. Thank you all so much, wishing you all well, and if we get something big to happen, just the next 24, 48, 72 hours, I will be there right away to update you, so please subscribe. Wishing all of you well, have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.